Hey guys, Greg with Drifter Journey. Today's video is about installing a subwoofer in the ProMaster. Uh, we got an 8 gauge uh, amp kit from Stinger. We picked it up at Car Toys. This is my first time using copper clad aluminum wiring. The guy promised me that since I'm running such low power that it's not going to be an issue. I've always run oxygen free pure copper before. But I'm gonna go for it. It's a little bit cheaper. See how it goes. Um, yeah. So basically, I'm gonna run a power wire, which I already actually did. Sorry, got ahead of myself. Uh, or yeah, whatever. And <laughs> run that from the battery down under the seat. The subwoofer is gonna be mounted under the seat. In the ProMaster, there's this little metal bracket that's held down with two bolts. Um, it actually, we already took it out, by the way. <laughs> Um, it holds the original jack bin from going all the way back so we removed that and threw it away because we're going to move our jack to a storage bin in the back so yeah I have that I'm gonna use ground wire I'm gonna ground to one of those bolts actually and then I am going to connect the JL audio ACP 108 it's an 8 inch powered subwoofer um, it can run off of input signals. So I'm actually going to splice in to where we did the rear speaker wires in the pillar here to get our signal. So we'll splice into there and then everything will be nicely tucked right here under the seat. Hopefully it's a pretty easy project. We will uh, see how that goes. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and comment if you have any questions or see me messing anything up. So I have a tendency to forget to tell you the important things, uh, but make sure you disconnect your ground wire on your battery while you're doing this. So the Stinger kit comes with a 60 amp inline fuse. I switched it out to a 30 amp because that is what the subwoofer calls for, but I'm going to need to snip this and get it in line here. So we will try and guess where I'm going to want it. And then make sure I have enough slack to put it there. Should probably go right down here on this side. So. Tighten that down. Don't drop your tools where you can't get them. Retrieving my Allen wrench. Oh! <laughs> Little magnet. Don't drop it down there in the first place. It's what happens when you're trying to record and do this at the same time. So now I want to get the sheathing off of this other one. By the way, this automatic tool that was supposed to be so amazing, I don't actually find it that amazing. But I have it, I'm using it. It does better on the thinner wire. that into there, tighten it up. I'm doing it with the fuse in. We didn't last time. Got a spark at the end. So I figure I'll just do it live this time and see what happens because I have five fuses in case I blow it. But I think it's gonna be all right. Comment if that's not the right way to do it. Put that back together. All right, so we got our power wire fuse in. I'm gonna mount it with some VHB tape just to the side of the housing in here. And then we will go back and work on the back end. Okay, so I didn't mention we're going to be using a line output converter. This is so 
when you have the stereo going up loud, from what I hear with a factory radio, as you go higher in the volume, it actually lowers the bass output so that you can save the factory crappy speakers so they don't get ruined. This actually allows for you to keep that control bass up throughout the whole spectrum. So this will go in, it's gonna pull this, the speaker wire, we'll splice into here to get the signal. And then we're gonna have power ground remote. We will bridge that over to this guy. And then it gives you a set of RCAs, at which we will put from there into the sub. And if all goes as planned, it should work. I'm gonna run our ground next. I'm just gonna use that bolt hole that we stole from the other piece we took out. So our ground will be nice and tight and right next to the subwoofer. All right, so I'm gonna do a splice that I've only done one other time in my life. These are the right speakers for the rear. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do them separate to play it safe. Um, you can pull them out. Yeah. I'm gonna do them one at a time. So we want to open up a little space in the line, like so. Do the same on the positive, like so. And then I'm gonna end up splitting this with the tool, feeding through, wrapping around, and then taping it up nicely. We'll show you how to do that. Pick set from Harbor Freight, and we're just gonna put it through the center of these wires on both of them. Try not to stab yourself too hard on the back side. These are nice wires though, so I might do that. So you get a little hole there. You're gonna do that. And then we're gonna feed our other wire through there, wrap it around a bunch, tape it up nice. All right, so we decided that we were gonna say the black writing is positive. And I'm gonna try and figure out which way I wanna run this, but that's gonna go in there, so then I'll tape it that way. To feed this wire through. Then you're going to just wrap it around like. So, and then as you can see, we pull on that, it's a pretty tight fit. So then I'm just gonna tape, and then tape these two together down a little bit with nice Super 33, I think is what it is for the electrical tape. And then that should not come loose. Those both spliced in. They are not coming undone. And then we put some tape on top of them, and then we'll cut them to length and we figure out what length we want. Okay, we are moving right along. Uh, we took our LC2, we actually mounted it under this little kick plate that's gonna go back in here because it seemed to fit. So we're going to have our RCAs will come up, we'll run them nicely over, they will go into the subwoofer here. Then we have our speaker inputs. They are going to go into the speaker inputs on the LC2, left and right there, positive, negative. And then we're gonna bridge the power with just another speaker wire so we'll have positive ground and remote jumping over to positive ground and remote which will also go in with the main power and ground and then hopefully it works <laughs> All right, so we ran positive ground remote so we have speaker wire for positive ground remote we ran it down under the floor around the base of the seat they come out here so now the remote will go into its own slot on the subwoofer and then the power and ground will go with the big power and ground from the battery and then it should work I keep saying that
Okay, so we are going to hook up the positive wire here uh, onto our battery. As you can see in the ProMaster battery, there's all kinds of spots down here. I already ran one for our trailer lights here. So I'm gonna use this stud, because it looks like another nice big one. But if for some reason you know that's a bad idea, let me know. Get that to come off, hopefully. So we're gonna do this, connect up the power wire, connect our ground back up. And in theory, I think we have everything connected. We connected the RCAs. And then hopefully it works. Because if not, I might not know what I did wrong. <laughs> and then I'll take VHB tape and tape this up in the end. I don't know if we said, but that's what we taped up the LC2 with too. That one's on there. Can that nicely run out? That's the problem with these, they don't plan for all this for you. Try that out that side. Now we turn on the van and see if it works. We got power lights, so that's a good sign. So the last thing we need to add is the remote. Oh, I am in there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we need to add the remote still. It's on back order. It's been on back order for over a month now. So once that comes in, uh, we will run it up into the dash here, drill a little hole, and then just run it over the sub under the floor again. I would have liked to have done it at the same time, but we didn't have that option. So, moment of truth. Well, you guys couldn't see the dance party we just had, but yeah, it works. It's working, so that's <laughs> excellent. The only bad thing about buying a full kit like we did, you end up with 16 feet of RCA, and we went 8 inches. So I'll just have to cool this up nicely, tuck it in. We're gonna tuck everything nice and back. Uh, once the re remote comes in, I will make some adjustments to the bass knobs and whatnot to make it sound how we want it to sound. And then we're gonna put some uh, super strong Velcro under this so it doesn't slide around in here. It's in pretty good, but we don't want it moving. And then on our current van, it's sitting behind the driver's seat uh, rear facing obviously it's under the passenger seat firing up now so she's gonna have to rumble on her butt all the time <laughs> but she wanted that kind of space fun. back <laughs> for the garbage can so that's why yeah. we did it I like this it looks good we don't have a heater here in this van so yeah. let us know if you have any questions um, I need to thank Mike Mike is checker box checker I believe check I'll box checker. check box checker. I'll put a link <laughs> below. Uh, Mike's our guy in Colorado Springs. He drove all the way out to Oregon when we were there to help me do this install in the last van. They came out to camp too, but I appreciate it. It made this a lot easier on me. And this me. go around. Yes, Jess did a lot. She did a lot of running the wires, make them look good. Uh, so Mike, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, anyways, if you have questions, ask me. If I don't have any answer, I'll probably ask Mike, and then we'll get back to you. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next video.